أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وبه نستعين ثم الصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ونبينا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد Dear sisters and brothers, Salam Alaikum. I hope you are all keeping well. The journey is at its final stages. Although we're going to have a Q&A tomorrow, but the lectures end tonight, the last night of Qadr, some say the most important night of Qadr. Tonight, in one night, if we're careful, we can achieve so much. The few hours which are in front of us can really change the rest of our life. I hope, inshallah, these 40, 45 minutes that we're together as well would be beneficial for everyone. Before I start, I really have to thank the lovely people at Shabab Septain who made these gatherings possible, who trusted me. It's very difficult to trust me, and they did it. They made these events possible, and they have created a space that we can come together, remember our God, feel His love. So if you want, and if you can, please make sure you support them. And they have a campaign on my sadaqah. You see there are QR codes on these walls, or if you can't find them, ask a volunteer. Let's support these lovely youth who have made these events possible and at such a good quality. Let's please recite a salawat for them. I want to also thank a few people in my life who've had a great impact on me. First one is my mom, who was the person who taught me about God's love and changed my life forever. And if you want to teach someone about God's love, it's not an easy job. You have to be very patient with them. You're dealing with a soul who's scared, who's naughty, who wants so many things, and you gotta keep showing them love and love and love till they finally accept. I also want to thank my dad because he taught me how to seek the truth. Again, teaching someone to seek the truth is not easy. We want so many things in life, so many desires we have that stop us from seeking the truth. But he kept he kept, he kept bringing me back to the truth with his own examples in those difficult moments that if he stayed away from the truth, he could achieve so much, but he stood on the truth and he showed me truth is the way. And I want to thank my wife who believed in me and who helped me slowly, slowly take steps out of hell towards God. The Quran says, Ma men kum illa wariduha. There is not, none of you who will not enter hell. We all start our life, God says in Surah, from Asfal al from the farthest point in the universe from God. And then slowly, slowly, we have to take these steps back to God. At a point in which we find ourselves in this dunya, God says, that is the farthest point from me. God is everywhere. But in this dunya, God's light is diluted. Imagine a world in which people can doubt the Creator. People use the breath God gives them, the knowledge God gives them, the power God gives them, the life God gives them to doubt Him. And God says, yes, because in this world, light is very diluted. 
And it is our task to slowly, slowly take these levels, go back to a place where it's filled with light. Our journey of life is a journey from darkness towards light. And as you go on this journey, not only what is around you changes, not only you slowly, slowly start seeing more of God around you from a place in which people can doubt God, you reach to a place where no one can doubt God, then you reach a place where you look around, you see someone's beauty, you see that's God's beauty. You see someone knowledgeable, you see that's God's knowledge. Then you go higher in this journey, you look around and you see nothing but God. As you go up from darkness to light, the world around you changes. You start from the bottom of a pit in which you can't see God and you end in a place where you can't see anything but God. You end at a place where all is around you is beauty, is God's knowledge, is God's power. And as you go up, you change too. Not only what you find outside changes, what you find inside changes too. When you are in the beginning of your journey, even inside there is not that much light. You look inside and you see there are thoughts you don't like. There are temptations you don't like. You may want things which you are not proud of. You may want things which you cannot share with others. You may have desires that you don't like. But as you go up, if you're... Don't be ashamed of that, by the way. That's the journey of life. The starting point, God says, is the farthest place from me. And so even inside, you'll find things you don't like. You may have desires, temptations, fantasies, jealousy even. It's okay. When we are far from God, when we don't feel his light, we get jealous. We want to be the best. We want everything. But as you go from this place up, slowly, slowly, you see even inside you're changing. You're feeling less jealous. Those naughty desires you had slowly, slowly fade. And so the journey from hell towards God is a journey that happens both outside and inside. <laughs> and you have to accept that at some point we're all in hell inside. The things which are inside us are not always beautiful. We all get jealous sometimes. We all have desires we don't like. And you just need to trust yourself, ask God for help, and you will slowly, slowly rise over these places. And so thank you, Zahra, for believing in me, helping me slowly, slowly rise from the hell of my being. Please decide to say what? Throughout the Quran, God is telling us there is only two ways to live in this world. There is only two ways to live in this world. You can either live like Ibrahim, Nuh, Musa, Yusuf, and our Prophet, or you can live like Fir'aun, Qarun, Abu Lahab, Shaitan. Only two ways of life is possible for you. There's only two ways of being in this world. Either you have come here and you realize, you find out that there is a reality that is the source of everything and you start a relationship with this reality or you don't. Either you realize that the source of your life, the source of your knowledge, the source of your power, the source of everything in this world is God, or you don't feel that. You are not in a connection with this reality. You're living on your own, cut, separated, isolated from the life-giving source. If you feel you're on your own in this world, if you can't see the trace of your soul back to its source, life becomes dark. 
The world becomes a scary place. The world becomes full of anxiety. You don't see that there's someone taking care of you. Now you have to take care of yourself. And that's so much pressure over you. Because no one is taking care of you, because you can't find peace in your source, you have to find peace in what's around you. You start hoarding, accumulating wealth, maybe my power, maybe my money, maybe my children, maybe my job, maybe these will give me peace. When your peace is not coming from your source and you have to get it from what's around you, what is around you becomes so important for you because your life depends on it. So if someone wants to come and take it away from you, you will do anything you can to stop them. So slowly, slowly you become fair own. If my peace depends on what I have and someone wants to take it away from me, I should stop them at any cost because my life depends on it. So God is telling us in the Quran, baby, within every one of you can be a fair own. If you don't realize your peace is coming from me, if you think it's coming from your money, your car, the people around you, you will have to control them to keep them there because everything you have you think depends on them. You would even manipulate the people in your life because if I think my peace is coming from my partner, hope she shouldn't change because the way she is right now gives me peace. If she changes a little bit, maybe it wouldn't give me peace. If she leaves, maybe it wouldn't give me peace. So she has to stay here and she has to stay the way I want her to be. So you become a fair own. So God is in the Quran telling you, baby, you can either be fair own or you can realize I'm taking care of you. I'm giving you peace, connect to me, then you don't need to put so much pressure on yourself. You can be like shaitan, or you can be like Adam. There's only two ways of being in this world. If you don't feel that you are connected to a reality who will take care of you, who will make up for your mistakes, who will compensate for your mistakes, whose ghaffar will forgive, then as soon as you make a mistake, it becomes so difficult. You cannot accept it. You go in denial. Shaitan makes a mistake. Why did you make a mistake? I didn't. Well, obviously, if you don't know there's a reality that loves you despite your mistakes, when you make a mistake, you can't accept it. It's too difficult for the ego to accept it. But there's another way of being in the world. Connect to the source. Relate to God know his love for you, you become like Adam, makes a mistake. Adam, why did you make a mistake? I'm sorry, I made a mistake. When you're connected to your loving, forgiving God, making mistakes becomes so easy. Because you accept immediately, say, God, I made a mistake. God, I made a mistake. Help me, help me fix it. You don't need to deny you don't need to worry about the pain. No. God says, I still love you. Try better next time. You can become like Noah or his son. Noah says, my protection is with God. My son, come towards me. Son says what? No, I'll take care of myself. And the water takes him. So Quran is telling you there's two ways of living in this world. Either let me take care of you as your loving God or be on your own. When you're on your own, you become so dependent on the little that you have and the little that you have is never enough for you. If you think your knowledge is going to protect you, your wealth is going to protect you, you become like Qarun. The same thing that wants to protect you will take you down. So there's only two ways of living in this world, Qurbun et Baram, you beautiful soul. Either you connect to the reality that loves you so much and you let him take care of you, or you want to go on this journey on your own. And it's going to be very difficult. And Quran is saying, why do you want to do that to yourself? Let God take care of you. And once you realize you are in this relationship with this reality, not just knowing it, once you feel his love for you, you become like Maryam, Lady Mary in the Quran. 
She is pregnant. People around her are judging her. Where is this baby coming from? She knows the reality who is the source of everything. Her loving God will take care of her, will protect her, and he does. In all of these stories, God is telling you there's only two ways to live in this world. Either trust me, know I love you, know I'll take care of you, or you'll be on your own. And on your own, it's so difficult. On your own, you, ha- you don't have enough to take care of you. Let me take care of you. When, a, when your nail breaks, who gets upset the most when your nail breaks? You, because it's your nail. When you step on a Lego, who hurts the most? You or your friends? You, because it's your leg that's now on the Lego. Why? Because it's yours. It's your toe. It's your nail. When something happens to your child, who hurts the most? You or your friends? You. Why? Because it's your child. You love them. They're yours. So you suffer the most. Allah, God says, Inna lillah, you're all mine. The reason you hurt when your child gets pain is because that child, you think it's yours. The reason your leg hurts, you suffer because you say, that's my leg. Now God says, you and your child are mine. I love both of you more than you love your child. If you hurt, who's going to hurt the most? If your child hurt, who's going to suffer the most? You, because it's your child. And God says, you're all mine. I love you like that. I love you more than your mom and dad love you. When one of us passes away, what do we tell the family of that beautiful soul who passed away? (inaudible) Do you know what we're trying to tell them? Imagine you were taking care of someone's child. They were gone to a trip. Or maybe you're in the shopping center, you see there's a child crying. And you tell the child, come here, I'll protect you till your parents come. When the parents come, you let the child in the hands of his parents, and the child is so happy. Say, see, mommy and daddy came, you're theirs. They're your real parents, go to them. The child will go to the parents and feel so happy. You had a limited job. In these few hours that his parents were not there, you took care of him. But when his mom and dad are found, you put his hand in the hand of his parents and you say, you belong to them. In these few years of in this world, we take care of each other, but we belong to God. When one of us passes away, we tell him we put his hand in the hand of his real owner, the one who loves him more than everyone else. Inna lillah, it means God loves you more than your mother and father ever did. If you hurt, God hurts the most. Please recite the salawat. I want to recite one line for you because tonight I've decided I don't want to just talk about God. I want to feel him too. The line translates as this, apart from you, O God, who have embraced my world. God says, God surrounds everything, embraces everything. Everything is within God's knowledge and power. So it says, God, apart from you, who's embraced my whole life, my whole universe, my whole being, No one gets me. No one knows how I'm feeling. Even when they ask me, how are you? They just expect me to say I'm fine and move on. Apart from you who's embraced my whole life and world, no one even knows how I'm feeling. No one asks me how I am. 
من با تو از چیزی نمی ترسم هر جا تو باشی من دلم قرصه With you I'm not scared of anything With you my heart is firm There is only two ways of being in this world Either you realize there's a reality that loves you more than your parents and is taking care of you, or you don't. As soon as you accept that, دیگه you have nothing to worry about. جز تو که دنیامو بغل کردی حال منو هیشگی نمی پرسه من با تو از چیزی نمی ترسم هر جا تو باشی من دلم قرصه Wherever you are, my heart is firm. That's our God. Five seconds, talk to God in your heart will continue. God is the hero of your life. Let's say now you're interested. You want to live this way. You want God to be taking care of you. You want to feel that. What is the way? What should you do? How can you have that? How can you live your life not just knowing that he's there for you, but feel it so that you're at peace. God says, you don't need to do anything. I will take care of you. Eh, I want to feel you. I want to get closer to you. What can I do to get closer? God says, I'm already close to you. I want more light. How can I come towards you? How can I feel more of your light? I want to do this. I will do that. God says, I don't even want you to come closer to me. I will bring you closer to myself. In Ayatul Kursi that we all read, what does it say? Allahu wali yulladhina amanu God says, accept me, want me, come to me. Allah I will come and take you from darkness to light. Who told you you have to do this alone? Who told you you have to do this? I will do it for you. Just accept me, come to me. Talk to me. No, I love you. I will do it for you. Allah wali yulladhina amanu. Yukhrijuhum. He will take them out. Min al-dhulumat ila nur. I will do this for you. If you want to feel God's love more, if you want to get closer to God, God says you're already close to me. I'm here, right next to you. You just need to feel it. You want me to love you? I already love you. You just need to feel it. Come to me. I'll give it to you. And when you want to come to me, baby, come for me. Connect to me. Don't come to me asking for something else. Everything else I will give you. Just come to me for my sake, for once. I'll give you everything else. Every time you came you ask for heaven. Every time you come to me, you don't want that. You don't want this bubble for once. Come to me. Don't even tell me I want to come closer to you. Just sit next to me for a few seconds. I'll sit next to you. Baby, God says stop being goal-oriented. You haven't come here to achieve anything. You don't need to gain anything. You have no duty. You don't need to do anything. 
Forget about goals. Forget about close, getting closer to God, becoming a better person. God says, I'll take care of all of that. You don't need to do anything. Just come sit next to me. God doesn't say your heart will find peace if you get closer to God. God doesn't say your heart will get peace if you try to go towards heaven. God says, you want peace? Come to me. Relate to me. Be Allah, a real relationship with God. Not goal-oriented. Not going to God to ask anything. When was the last time we went to God and we said, God, I don't want anything. I just want to relate to you. God is like a mom. Do you want to go to your mom every single time and ask for something? Mom, where's my socks? Mom, where's this? Mom, where's that? Don't you want to go hug her? Don't you want to go hug this reality that loves you so much? Even if you want to get closer, if you want to become a better person, if you want heaven, all of that he will give you. Every, every single problem you have will be fixed. But when you're going to God, don't think about that. Imagine you want to get closer to your wife or your husband. If you put that goal on yourself, if you put that pressure, every second you're sitting next to them, you have so, your mind is always there. Hope, I don't, we have to make this time special. I don't, we have to get closer. Oh, God, let go. Forget about achieving anything. Just be there. Talk to her. Talk to him. You will get closer. God says, let go of everything. Come to me. Relate to me. Come to me with your heart. I will bring you closer. I will make you feel loved. And I will heal every single problem you have. Every issue we have, anxiety, addiction, temptations, fears, whatever problem we have, it means a corner of our heart, a corner of our soul, light hasn't reached. When you sit in front of God, when you start a relationship with God, God's light comes and fills every corner of your soul. There would be no dark corner left. You don't need to do anything to heal. Go to God. Be there. Feel Him. Relate to Him. Everything would be healed. All of your problems will be healed all at once. Ilahi, Ilahi. لم يكن لي حول فأنتقل به عن معصيتك إلا في وقت أيقظتني لمحبته وكما أردت أن أكون كنت مناجات شعبانیه امام is telling God God I have no strength to separate myself from my shortcomings other than the time I am awakened by your love و کما اردتا أن أكون Kunt, and I become like the way you want me to become. What is Imam teaching you in Munajat Shabaniya? You want to become a better person? You want to become stronger? You want to feel God's love? Feel His love. Go to Him. Relate to Him. Once you feel His love, He will do the rest of the job. If you want yourself, your children, your grandchildren, if you want this community to become beautiful, help them fall in love with God's love. Help them fall in love with God. That's the only way. Please recite a beautiful salawat.
every action, every part of our life is a meeting point with God. Oh, we have one task in this life to do. I remember when I was a child, my mom would keep coming to me and say, Jabot, fall in love with God before your life finishes. Fall in love with God. Fall in love with God. There's one task we have in this life. Fall in love with the reality who loves us more than anyone else. In order to love him, you have to slowly, slowly go towards him. Meet him. He's so beautiful, it's impossible to meet him and not love him. Oh, he loves us so much. (laughs) Khub, Allah has provided so many opportunities for us to keep seeing his beauty so that slowly, slowly we fall in love. Once you fall in love, you're taken care of. The rest of your right becomes so easy. When you're at work, when you're at home with your children, with your family, when you're praying, your prayer, your Joshan Kabir, your recitation of the Quran. These are all opportunities for you to meet God. Please pay attention. In the next 10 minutes, I want to share what I built five nights for to get here. Salat itself is just an empty form. Salat is a meeting point. Quran is a meeting place between you and God. Salat on its own is beautiful form, but it's empty. You're the one who can either bring your soul to it and make it the most special thing in the world, or not bring yourself to Salat, not bring your soul, even if you do it, it wouldn't do anything. Baby, religion, religious acts, rituals, They are all beautiful, but only if you bring your soul to them. On their own, they don't have anything. Imagine a hug. You want to hug a friend. Hug in itself is empty. Imagine you want to hug someone, but you've got grudges from them. So your body is hugging their body, but you're withdrawing your heart. You're withdrawing your soul. You're feeling all the things they did to you. Even if you hug them, believe me, it will give them no peace. Because your body is hugging them, but your soul is not. You're withdrawing your soul. Your soul hates them. Your body is doing one thing, your soul is doing another. Salat is the same. You can either do it with your body or bring your soul to. If you do it with your body, Salat will be empty. Salat doesn't have that much from itself. You bring it, you bring your soul to it, and then your soul will help to fly. Salat is like an airport. If you don't bring the plane, nothing will fly. You have to live your life as a soul. Please, please pay attention. Has ever a little child, maybe your own child, a younger sibling come to you and asks you that I'm scared? Maybe it was the first day of school. I don't want to go to school. Maybe they went to school, someone bullied them, and they came back to you as as their parent, as their older sibling, and they said, I'm scared. They're hurting me. They say I'm not good enough. They say I don't look good enough. What do you do in that moment? You hold her hand, you hold his hand. You say, no, 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 I love you. You're special. You're beautiful. Mommy will take care of you. Daddy will take care of you. And slowly, slowly, that soul will find some peace, right? That child. Allah, in Salat, what you're doing is you're becoming mother for your soul. You can either perform Salat with your body, which would be very limited light, or 
You take the hand of your soul. Please pay attention to this. Well, Allah, try this tonight. If it didn't help you, never listen to me again. In Salat, from the moment you say, Allahu Akbar, that your body did that. Now you have to take the hand of your soul and slowly, slowly take your soul through every step of this prayer. Ibn Qurbun et Biram, if a child knows that she has a loving mother, imagine a three-year-old right now alone in a room and she's crying. And you come and tell her, there is a God, sorry, your mother loves you so much. The three-year-old child would be like, I don't care if my mommy loves me or not. Alan, I want my mommy. I want mommy now. No, your mom is a very lovely person. Your mom really loves you. I don't care. I want mommy now. What do you do? You bring her mommy. You put her hand in the hand of mommy. And she relaxes. Hala, if you know God is great. If you know God is kind. If you know merciful. Your soul says, I don't care. Put my hand. If you're saying God is loving. If you're saying God is greater than everything, put my hand in his hand. Then I will stop crying. Don't keep telling me. Show me. So in Salat, you are trying to take the hand of your soul and put it in the hand of God. When you say Allahu Akbar, now you go inside and tell yourself, Javad. Javad, there is a God in this world. There is a creator. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. You start Surah Fatiha. Javad, Javad, the soul inside you. In Salah, you become your own mother. And you tell the soul inside who is scared. The soul doesn't care what you know. The soul wants to feel it. Javad. This love, this God loves you. This God is caring. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. You pause. You wait for your soul to feel it. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Javad, I told you this world has a God. And this God is so kind. And everything in this world, he takes care of it. Rabbal Alameen. You know how a parent would tell his child who was scared, Daddy takes care of you. Now you're telling your soul, God will take care of everyone. Rabbal Alameen. Only if you read these with your body and you don't allow your soul to hear it, your prayer finishes, your soul hasn't learned anything. You're sitting in your BMW, you're sitting in your Audi, you're sitting on your comfy chair, and you're like, life around me is perfect, why am I not happy? Because your soul wants its Lord. You didn't take the hand of your soul and put it in the hands of God. ببین جواد, you're talking to your soul. جواد, یاسین, فاطمه, مهدی, Zainab, Sara, Ali, whatever your beautiful name is, go inside and tell yourself, Bibin, if you want to be in this life, okay, go towards God. There's only one reality here that can help you. Imagine your child is at the door of the school. And you're telling your child, Bibin, if you go to the school, if you had any issue, go to, for example, Miss Fatima, she's the kind one in the school. If anyone hurts you, go to Miss Fatima. She'll take care of you. She's the kind one in the school, for example. Now you're telling your soul, baby, alone after prayer, I'm going to leave you. If you had any issue and you want help, go and get help from God. Iyaka nasta'in. Ihdina sirat al-mustaqim. Sirat al-lazina an'amta alayhim. غَيْرِ الْمَغْلُوبَ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا الظَّالِينَ Javad, my soul. قُرْبُنَتْ We're talking right now. I'm going to leave you after Salat. 
Just remember, in this world, there are two groups. One group find God and an amta alayhim. They're in blessing. Life is beautiful. But baby, if you don't go towards God, if you don't go towards Miss Fatima, if you don't go towards God, life's become difficult for you. You will get lost. You can't find God. You can't find peace. Life becomes difficult. Every step of the prayer, you're taking the hand of your soul and teaching it something. Then you go, no, we don't have time. You go to Sejdeh. Subhana Rabbi al A'la wa bihamdi. Baby, this God I was telling you about, Subhana, nothing bad he'll do to you. He'll take care of you. Subhana Rabbi al A'la wa bihamdi. God really loves you all. God takes care of you all. Rabbi dige. Rabbi is the caretaker. And Subhana. It's not a caretaker who would want to harm you. Nah, nah, Subhana. Subhana Allah, Subhana Allah, Subhana Allah. Baby, alone after Salat, I'm going to leave you. You may go in your life, you may think God wants to harm you, and as a result of that, you may not go towards Him. No, 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 no. Subhana Allah, Subhana Allah, Subhana Allah. If you ever felt like God wants to harm you, you've made a mistake. Go and ask Him. Baby, He would never harm you. Even if you think he's doing something wrong, I know you haven't understood it. Go towards him. Go, go, go. Subhanallah. 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 Ashhadu Allah ilaha illallah. You're in your tashahud. You sit your soul down, literally. Your body is down and saying those things, it doesn't mean anything. No. You sit your soul down. Ashhadu Allah ilaha illallah. You tell yourself, baby, in Javad, in this world, safety is only with God. Javad, if you want safety, don't go towards money. Allah, go towards God, He will even give you money. Javad, safety is with God. Then, when you say the salam and you get up from your prayer mat, your soul need, knows what to do for a few hours. You've given it good guidelines. It goes and lives. Like sending a child to school. It goes. If there's any problem, it will go to Miss Fatima. And then again, a few hours later, it comes back and you tell it again. Baby, there is a God who is very powerful. Please recite the salawat. I was in a therapy group, and I remember some of the people in that therapy group were parents. And they said our children are very scared of the war that's happening. They were most of them non-Muslims, and they said we're so scared of this Russia-Ukraine war. And our children come to us, and they say we're scared. And we tell them it's going to be okay, but we inside are scared too. The children went to the parents. The parents had come to the therapy group and they told the person who was leading the therapy group. And he was saying, I'm scared too. Oh, in this world, no one has safety other than God. Your children come to you, you go to that therapy group, the therapy lead himself, where does he get his safety from? He was saying, I'm scared too. That's why you sit yourself down in prayer. And you tell yourself, oh, safety is with God. No one has any safety to offer. Only the part that they get from God. Oh, a person went to Imam Sadiq alayhi salam and said, Imam, I get so many thoughts. So many intrusive thoughts, they come, get me scared. What should I do? Imam said, baby, sit yourself down every now and then. Put your hand on your chest and tell yourself, La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. I've seen some people give advice like this that say, yeah, for intrusive thoughts, say, La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah, la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. No, 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 don't say it, no. Sit yourself down, put your hand on your chest, on your heart, and say, Javad, 
everything in this world is in God's hand. لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله. My last point. You know, at that moment when our journey in this world finishes and we are about to continue our journey in the other world at that moment of death, which is actually a very beautiful moment. Quran says, You taste death. Death is smaller than your soul. Oh, at that moment, you know what they tell us? All of those of you who've lost someone, you know. They, when they put our body, because our soul has escaped from the prison of the body. But our soul, if in this world we haven't taught it well, may be a little bit confused. Yani you can pray your whole life, you can مثلاً, read du'a, joshan, kabir, and everything. But if you just do it with your body, if you don't teach your soul, it won't have that much impact. So just as a safety mechanism, whenever anyone passes away, they try to teach his soul. They come and say what? Isma, ifham, ya fulan ibn fulan. Talqin, which means they're trying to teach the soul. Maybe a soul has passed away. Wallah, we had friends here last year who are no longer with us. Alon, they're in the mercy of their God. They have gone to their God. Imam Sajjad had a child, and the child got very ill. And Imam was desperate, doing everything to make the child feel better. It didn't work. The child passed away. Imam was very relaxed. They asked him a few moments ago, you were doing everything, getting every pill, very desperate to make him feel better. Now you're very calm. He said, yes. When he was alive, it was my responsibility. I tried my best. Now God is taking care of him. Now he's with his owner. He's going to be happy. But Bibin, you're going to be sorted in that world. But if your soul doesn't know, it will take you some, some time to accept it. Yani in that world, God wants to come take care of you. But if your soul doesn't know what's the story, it would be confused. Some souls, after they leave this world, even though God with all of his love wants to come take care of them, it's a strange world for them. They don't know. They still hadn't accepted God is loving. Ahl al-Bayt are loving. The Prophet is loving. So it takes them a while. There's going to be a few hours of confusion for them. Until the Ahl al-Bayt, God will come show themselves and the soul finally relaxes. So in order to make it easier for them, you know what we do when a soul passes away? You go to them and you say, Isma, listen, ifham, understand. Ya fulan ibn fulan, Jawad, the son of Muhammad Ali. Zahra, daughter of Thamir. Listen, Isma, ifham. And then what do you say? Inna Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala ni'ma rab. Bibin, you have a Lord who will take care of you and ni'mar rab. What a beautiful caretaker. He'll take care of you or relax. This is a new world. I know you may not see mommy, you may not see your partner. You've left them in this dunya, you're in a new place. Ni'mar rab. God is here, God will take care of you. Wa anna muhammadan sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi ni'mar rasul. You've got a prophet, best prophet, best messenger. He'll take care of you. And the A'imme, Ni'mal A'imme, they will come, they will help you, they'll take care of you. Oh, Allah, I want to ask you a suggestion. Why should we wait till we die to accept that? Tonight, sit yourself down and say, Isma, Ifham. Tell your soul, why should I wait till then to relax and know there's someone who takes care of me? Tonight, Let's sit ourselves down and say, Javad, whatever your beautiful name is. Sit your soul down and say, Bebin Esma, Efha. You have Ni'mar Rab. You have the best caretaker. Ni'mar Rasul. And that caretaker has sent messengers for you. Ni'mar A'imma. And the best Imams. They've got your back. Thank you so much. 
It was a beautiful journey. I'm sorry I spoke more than my time. I really appreciate it. Tonight is a very special night. Whatever you're doing, whatever line you're reading, sit your soul down and allow your soul to understand it. Should we end with the salawat? Just one thing, Even with salawat, don't do it with your body. Do it with your soul. When you say, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad, take the hand of your soul, send your soul towards the Prophet. Your body will not feel it. You may not see what's happening, but in your soul, it will lit up. Wallah, if I didn't know for sure, I would not tell you. When you recite the salawat, just be mindful, send your heart. Your heart will it be in darkness, but the light of the Prophet and his family will create a garden, a feast, a feast of light in your soul. Let's recite the salawat like that. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad.